So yesterday there was a post on LinkedIn about cleaning of solar panels and the importance of uh, not wasting the water, that is reusing this water. There was a lot of questions and comments about how effective it is to do this kind of uh, cleaning and what really happens to the water after it is collected in this gutter. So today I am going to show actually how this water is being recirculated. Okay. So what I mean by recirculation is this water, the water which gets into this gutter gets into a filtration unit and goes to our sump, underground sump and gets back into our overhead tank and we use it for all purposes. See the glass is a very clean catchment, okay, there is hardly any dust in the, in, in the glass. So the water which actually flows or rather runs off from the glass is rather very clean, there is hardly any problem in this water. One can even directly drink it. But having said that there may be some, some contamination and some dust, so this goes through some filtration and goes into our underground sump. And so far as the energy is concerned, we are just using a, a pressure pump of 0.6 kilowatt. So 0.6 kilowatt is running for about, even if you take 10 minutes in a day, it's hardly any energy, maybe 0.1 or 0.2 units. So another point which was actually discussed yesterday was the effectiveness of this cleaning. So as I said, this is good, this kind of uh, 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 arrangement is decent, but once in a way, it's better to also use a wiper. Because sometimes, as I told you yesterday, the, the cleaning must be uniform, otherwise there will be formation of hot spots. So once in a way, it's better to use a, a, a wiper or, or most importantly, it should be microfiber. It's most importantly to use a, a wiper to make sure that the cleaning is done uniformly. So now we will go down, rather now I will show you how is this water drained and then get uh, and how it is actually recirculated back into our house. So this is the water, so this is the catchment and the water falls into this gutter, okay. So from this gutter, the water gets into a funnel T, there is a funnel T here, so water gets down here and then gets into a pipe network. I will take you down and show you how and where this water is actually going. Let us just go down from the solar panels, I will show you the pipe network now. So you saw the solar panels on the top. Again, see these are the gutters. I have got three base of solar panels. So there are three gutters and see this is the gutter. You can perhaps you can even listen to the uh, sound of water. So the water is coming rather going through this pipes. See this is the pipe network like this. I have got one, two, there are three. So there are three pipes. Okay. So the water is going down from these pipes and now you can see here the pipe is going down like this. Okay, so I will take you around. So now you can come this side. So there's a pipe there. You can see that's 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 the pipe. Okay, I will show it to you. This is the pipe, and it's going all the way there. And uh, let's go now. So that's the pipe there. So the water is coming through that pipe and here it is. This is the pipe. So all the, it's also important, it's not just the water which is cleaning the solar panels, even the rainwater. The rainwater also comes through the same network. It's so it's also a rainwater harvesting system. So the water which is falling on the solar panels is going through these pipes and from here, this goes down. Okay. Bottom we have a set of things. What you can see here now, this is a sedimentation tank, okay. So the water goes into the sedimentation tank and there is a filtration tank there. Water is actually flowing as a, as a water is falling on the filtration tank. We will go down and see that in detail. So now it is a sedimentation tank and a filtration tank. Then it goes into the sump. Now just let us go down, okay, and I will explain each of them in detail. Okay, so now as you saw, this is a sedimentation tank. So even before the water gets into the sedimentation tank, the water comes in this pipe. You can see this pipe here and the valve here is closed. Technically, it is called a first strain separator. As I told you, this is also a way in which we harvest the rainwater. So by default, this is closed. Since this is closed, the water builds up here and then there is a Y joint. Okay, There is a Y joint given there. Through that Y joint, the water gets into this sedimentation tank. Okay, Why Y joint? Because to avoid the surface tension forces. 
okay so now this is the sedimentation tank what i mean by sedimentation tank is the water before getting into filtration this is the filtration tank before the water going into the filtration tank it goes into this sedimentation tank okay why this is provided because if there is some contamination in the water if there is any silt or anything it settles down here first it settles down here second it settles down here the overflow from this gets into the filtration tank and what is this uh, water uh, used for this is used for non potable use see here it is so now we can uh, collect the water okay we can collect this water so this is used for any kinds of non non uh, potable use like you can put it for gardening or floor swabbing or something like that though it is clean sometimes it is better to actually separate out the first few minutes of water so this is called a sedimentation tank the overflow from the sedimentation tank that goes into our filtration tank you can come here so this is our filtration tank this is the same mechanism for rain water the rain water as well as the solar panel cleaning water goes through the same set of uh, systems that is the sedimentation tank filtration tank so this is the filtration tank i have got silex here below this there is a layer of activated carbon what we call as iv600 below the uh, activated carbon we have got aggregates aggregates because these things should not actually drain into the sump so the water after filtering through all these layers goes to our storage okay so this is our storage tank okay so the water comes back here right so this is now this gets pumped up into overhead tank where they are using it for all purposes again right so the whatever water is flowing through either coming running off from the solar panels gets into the uh, filtration tank and gets stored in this sump this is our main domestic sump this is it is this water that we use for all potable purposes all non potable purposes including drinking so this goes into all our uses so the water gets recirculated back now a question comes so what happens to the first stain water or what happens to this water in this tank so absolutely no water is wasted we have got a recharge well here okay technically this is called an unconfined aquifer because now see it's open to atmosphere this is under atmospheric pressure so it's called an unconfined aquifer or a uh, regular you can say the conventional well so suppose we don't want the water or how do we drain out the first few minutes of water so the water which is stored in this pipe right has to be drained out after every rain or after every now and then so that this pipe is again empty but we don't want to waste this water so what i do whenever i don't want the water or when i want to drain this water i'll open this valve so now I, i'll open this valve you can observe into the recharge well 3 2 1 i open this and now the water is coming into this unconfined aquifer or a recharge well so this gets into the soil augments the ground water there are exclusive videos on uh, uh, unconfined aquifer the dynamics and economics of uh, unconfined aquifer i am sharing that as well so this is called unconfined aquifer so the water which we don't want or water which is actually draining out of the first few minutes of water gets into this recharge well and augments the uh, ground water also this what suppose i want to clean this tank suppose i want to clean the sedimentation tank what do i do i have given a valve here right this valve if i open the water from there starts coming back again into this recharge well you can see now this is the water okay and now say if it is raining and the sump is full what happens is that overflow from that sump also comes through this pipe into the same recharge well so this will be uh, an unconfined aquifer where the water gets into the soil water and we are lucky the water starts yielding after some time there are many many test cases in which the water has come back from this well which is sometimes potable as well so this is the entire uh, journey of the water that actually falls on the solar panels so one small another detail we also have a a dc dc pump or a dc motor here which is connected to a 150 watt solar panel 
So the water which falls from the solar panel into this uh, sump also gets pumped up. I have got a controller here. You can see actually this water is being pumped. You can see here. The water is getting again pumped into the overhead tank. So this completes the entire water cycle. As you saw on the rooftop, other than the solar panels, we have also the roof where we have got some plants and other stuff. Okay, so the water which falls there is generally a little dirty. So that is coming in another pipe. Okay, and that directly falls into the recharge well. So that water is not used for any portable use. The water which falls on the floor gets directly into the recharge well. Like this, we are not actually wasting even a single drop of water which falls on the rooftop. The water which is used for cleaning the solar panels gets back into our sump, goes back for our consumption. The rainwater falling on the solar panels goes through the same network. The water which falls on the surface, that's the rooftop, gets directly into the recharge wells. More details, more detail about the recharge well is also given. I'm sharing that link as well. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.